Okay, so you're in Florida from your home of Guyana and you're head first into the educational path and leadership path and coaching. And, and But at some point along that journey, you found yourself in Arizona, Phoenix area, right? Yes, I'm in the Phoenix area, it's specifically Goodyear, but it's like uh, 10, 15 miles off Phoenix on the west of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So um, I love it. And I ended up here, be, it was very, it was a very, um, I would say I, I planned the move. I put it off for, for many years, but I already had family living here. My mom's sister and her family was living here for about 10 years prior to my moving here, probably even okay. more. So my brother-in-law was in the military, so they moved from Georgia to here. Um, but I was single again, and um, my tenure with the uh, state of well career source, I had I was laid off. So um, I knew because I in knew the Florida? market. Yes, okay. I know the job market pretty much throughout the state of Florida because I work with workforce. So I always knew if if that day came, because once you have budget cuts in, in, in government nonprofit, it, it that day can come for any of us. And so um, I knew once that day come, I was either moving to probably Tampa or Orlando or completely out of state. And I thought it would be best to, um, to uh, move to Arizona since I had family here and I was I went through the 2017 hurricane by myself in a high rise. <laughs> I, was, I was not scared. I slept through the thing. I was about to say I waited the whole time and then finally when it hit, I was fast asleep. There was a power outage. I had no idea. But um, so I moved to Arizona. I did get hired before I moved here uh, to work with the, uh, the company in education leadership as well and uh, be a manager and overlook as an education coordinator for that program. So that was that would burnt my move. I didn't move without having a job. So it see, what, what I saw was what I did was I always had a sort of, not a backup plan, but my career in education, it was never failing me and I love it. And I can always go back to it um, full-time or part-time and I'm, I'm always involved in it, but I can be full-time or part-time at any time of my life. That's why a lot of, I say I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur because I've like I have so many things I'm birthing right now and um, even so I I just I just focus on one project at a time then. <laughs> and get great people <laughs> to work with and collaborate with. So at least I think this is a really good segue into kind of steering our conversation to the financial piece of it, your your financial mindset. Uh, and so you experienced the layoff yes. and from the period of uh, what type of financial hardship, if any, was it something you were prepared for financially or was it like, uh, you know, a surprise, a, a smack in the face type of thing? Did you, did you get knocked down and have to claw your way back up and rebuild your financial uh, fort, so to speak. What did that? What was that experience like for you? So, it, interestingly enough, um, my ex-husband and I had just separated like six months, almost six months prior to my layoff. So, I had got my own space and recreated a, a, a little queendom for myself, and was standing pretty solid on having somewhat of a savings, not anything close to what I'm used to, because we're coming. I'm coming from a double income household. I would say when you ask questions like why didn't I have kids well God knew because look at where I was standing I I could not really not provide for a child when I have zero income um so it was pretty hard um for me but one thing I learned I never have a mindset around money where I have lack I've learned some things about my mindset around money but not thinking I'm not going to have enough to meet my needs was not one of them. So I was like, okay, I'm here, I'm laid off. I've got a severance that is ridiculously only two months of my, two weeks of my paycheck, um, but grateful. I was very grateful. And I quickly got back into consulting um, with uh, uh, childcare facilities and got getting people to do startups while I work part-time with another agency. So I was juggling two jobs. So it made it really challenging for me physically. <laughs> 
but I also had fun doing it. It was it was rough because I didn't have an income. I didn't have double income. I had no fallback, and my savings was going down, 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 down very quickly because <laughs> it was just what I had access to. So um, that was hard. I had to come get back up. Mm, wow. So with the initial layoff, did you have a safety net in place at all, or was it like you were caught swimming naked, so to speak? Yeah, I was caught swimming naked, <laughs> life's worth. I mean, it was simple. I mean, I, I got called over to a meeting and um, the vice president and one member of HR, they're literally sitting there in tears. And I was the first of 11 that day <laughs> to get laid off. And so um, it was very hard for them. And I, and I was like, don't cry because I know I'd be okay. Cause they were just, just, just worried about, you know, saying this to people who are so passionate and dedicated to the company and to what we do. And also know that our livelihoods depended on keeping a paycheck. And we were already in kind of a tough, this was 2017. So things weren't exactly great economically. Um, particularly, I think the job market was just not so great in Florida either. Wow. Okay. So from the time that you experienced the hardship of a layoff to the time where you start to get back on your feet and rebuild your, your financial house, what, what, how long was that time frame that you were going through the struggle to get back to where you were? Yeah, it, 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 it took, let's see, 2016, I would say it took almost three years hmm. to be in a situation where I'm confident because um, even though I was working and making money, it's just making meeting my needs, my basics. Um, hmm. To have money to do other things, I have actually worked additional jobs in the recent past hmm. to have a savings. <laughs> Like when I started my business and got certified as a coach, um, I paid out of my savings cash. Um, I have more or less um, developed a habit, which is not so great for credit, where if it's not, if I can't pay for cash, I could use my credit card, but if I can't pay for cash, I don't get it. Um, and I also have this approach of I live beneath my means. So if I can really afford, um, a ten thousand dollar vacation. I'm going to significantly cut it in half and and go for a five thousand dollar vacation, and then bargain hunt. <laughs> so I only spend three thousand dollars and have a great vacation. Um, I tell people I'm more fancied with experiences um, than I am with things. So I have this minimalist approach to life, but I don't. Fully, I haven't, I've bought a couple of books that are in my um, Audible list to go through. I think I'm getting there March because I make a list of books. I read about five per, per month. And so minimalism is something, the whole term, I, do, I did not even realize it was a thing. <laughs> but because I am, again, wanting to provide opportunities for other people um, that won't be able to do so because of money, um, like, for example, what I'm having the opportunity to do in, in Ghana and, and in Pakistan coming soon, um, they don't have access to money. And if I'm going to be a part of that project and ask people for money, I'm going to also put my own money where my mouth is. And so that means, um, again, I should have money. So why do I need a 20, a, a 150 inch flat screen in my home when I could just I don't even watch TV, pretty much. <laughs> I watch YouTube, so I only need one TV. So it's stuff like that. And I, I, I say minimalism very slightly, not to, because there are people who are gung-ho and very great. Eventually, I'm, I'm going to be there, but I, that's my approach to life. And, and that's because that experience, like you asked, how long did it take to get me back? I was never an overly lavish um, things type of individual, but I find that's where a lot of our money gets wasted and we're not able to live the life that we want for ourselves because we're not, first of all, we don't understand money and we don't really understand wealth. And that's why you exist. <laughs> Speak on that. I'm still learning so much. <laughs>